On February 3rd, 1995, Space Shuttle Mission STS-63 lifted off from the Kennedy Space Center at Cape Canaveral, Florida for space with a woman pilot for the first time. Liquid oxygen tank now at flight pressure. Discovery crew, OTC, close and lock your visor. Initiate O2 flow. Have a good flight. That's been working. Thanks a lot. Standing by to turn off the heaters on the solid rocket booster joints. Then we'll have a final check of the booster One commands. Time. Solid rocket booster nozzles being gimbaled. T minus 18 seconds. Solid rocket boosters armed. Sound suppression water system activated. T minus 10 seconds. Go for main engine start. Main engines now started. Main engines up and running. Three, two, one, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Discovery on a mission to prepare for the next era of world cooperation in space. Hello, program, Houston. Roger, roll, Discovery. Houston is now controlling Discovery on its 20th trip to space. Discovery rolling on course for an orbit with the Mir space station. Mir currently half a world away above the Indian Ocean. Three engines on Discovery now throttling down to two-thirds throttle. Eileen Collins, born in Elmira, New York in 1956, graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Mathematics and Economics from Syracuse University in 1979 and went on to earn a Master of Science degree in Operations Research from Stanford University in 1986 and a Master of Arts degree in Space Systems Management from Webster University in 1989. A career in the Air Force was in this remarkable lady's blood, and in 1979, she completed pilot training, one of the few women at the time to do so. Highly skilled as a pilot, she became an instructor for the next three years before flying C-141 cargo planes all over the world. From 1986 to 1989, Collins served as a mathematics professor at the U.S. Air Force Academy. In 1990, Eileen became just the second woman to complete test pilot training and was selected for training as an astronaut. On the 1995 Discovery mission, Collins flew as second in command on her historic flight as a shuttle pilot on a mission that linked up with the Russian Mir space station. Proving capable of everything she does, Collins gave birth to a daughter in 1996. She had earlier married a fellow Air Force officer. Eileen Collins was ready for more space missions by 1997 when she rocketed into space aboard the shuttle Atlantis. Up on a go for auto sequence start. T minus 31 seconds. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Atlantis's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 15. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. We have a go for main engine start. 4, 3, 2, 1. We have booster ignition and liftoff of the space shuttle Atlantis, maintaining America's constant presence in space. Houston now controlling the flight of Atlantis. Uh, yeah, I was just the program. Roger, roll, Atlantis. Echoing the words of Yuri Gagarin on his launch 36 years ago, Commander Charlie Preport puts Atlantis into the roll, heads down, wings level for the eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Mike Full headed to the Mir space station. Thirty seconds into the flight, Atlantis's three liquid fuel main engines now throttling back in a three-step fashion to 67 percent of rated performance to dampen the stress on the shuttle's aero surfaces as it breaks through the sound barrier. Then, in 1999, Collins became the first woman space shuttle commander when she took Columbia up to deploy a giant space telescope, the Chandra X-ray Observatory. T-minus 20 seconds. T-minus 15. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 
three. We have a go for engine start, zero. We have booster ignition and liftoff of Columbia, reaching new heights for women in X-ray astronomy. Booster Columbia is in the roll. We've got a fuel cell pH number one. Roger roll, Columbia, we're looking at. Columbia, Houston, we'd like AC bus sensors off. We're evaluating the fuel cell. Columbia. Hey, that's complete, sir. Roger that, Columbia. Looks like we had a transient on AC1. Eileen Collins retired from the Air Force as a colonel in 2005 and a year later retired as an astronaut. Having earned the status of Master Astronaut, she has also earned numerous military awards such as the Legion of Merit, Distinguished Flying Cross, Air Force Commendation Medal, and the Legion of Honor from France, among others. Enshrined in the National Women's Hall of Fame, she has also earned the Harmon Trophy in 1995, a spot in the U.S. Astronaut Hall of Fame, honorary degrees, and other awards ad infinitum. Working in the private sector as a member of the board of USAA, the Military Service Personnel Insurance Company, Collins spoke at the Republican National Convention in Cleveland, Ohio in 2016 amid speculation that she may be named NASA Administrator. With an incredible 38 days, 8 hours, and 10 minutes in space, this remarkable woman would certainly seem well qualified to serve as the head of NASA, or for that matter, just about any other job President Trump may ask of her. Eileen Collins deserves a place in the pantheon of great aviators and aviatrices as a real American hero. As a question for my students, who is your favorite female astronaut and why? If you like this video and would like to receive notification of new videos, please feel welcome to subscribe to History and Headlines. Your viewership is much appreciated.